Sometimes, your desire for acceptance from others can lead to behaviors that sabotage you. From the moment that we're born, we have to rely on others for our survival. However, if this need is not expressed healthily, it can harm our well-being. Therefore, we need to be cautious of how it can negatively affect us. Today we're going to be exploring how the need for validation can be self-sabotaging. We'll also be going through what it entails by exploring simple and actionable steps you can take to decrease your chances of self-sabotage. Now let's explore it. Number 1. State your opinion without actively seeking approval. Before we start, there are situations where predicting others' responses are helpful. At work or in other sensitive environments, there's always going to be a necessary degree of self-monitoring. However, you have to be aware of when and how self-monitoring can sabotage you. The more that you want someone else's acceptance, the more likely that you are to censor yourself in order to please them. By forecasting into the future and trying to predict whether or not they will agree with you, you will always remain subservient to others to your own detriment. You should not be waiting for other people's nod of approval in order to state your opinion. You have to learn to trust what you say. So long as what you're saying is not outright disrespectful and doesn't involve someone else's belief systems, then it's okay to disagree with others. Most people don't mind being disagreed with unless it involves their beliefs. In some cases, people can be great friends and even disagree on their religious or even political views without being combative. In the worst case that you cross a line accidentally, you can simply apologize and move on. Just remember that the more that you censor yourself, the more disingenuous that you come off. With regards to people that don't tolerate disagreement, these types of people tend to be more controlling. Personally, I would avoid involving myself with someone who behaves like this, but it's on you to decide if it's worth it to involve yourself with someone who devalues you to the point that they push you to censor yourself. Number 2. Don't rely on others for your validation. Validate yourself. Others can use validation as a form of value and therefore create an unfair social exchange for you. I will be making a video on value which explains the concept in more detail, but social exchange involves bringing something to the table. Both sides initially exchange something, and then ideally, the bond of shared experience and mutual trust and reliability becomes the shared value. By being too dependent on other people's validation, it gets in the way of you having a fair exchange when trying to get what you want. The more validation that you need from others, the less that they need to bring to the table, since their efforts to validate you already act as a form of value. Therefore, seeking validation self-sabotages you by devaluing what you bring to the table. The way to decrease this dependence on others for validation is by validating yourself. As odd as it might seem, you have to view yourself as a separate person that you have a relationship with. Then, you have to truly internalize that every aspect that you might seek to hide about yourself is enough. Once again, you have to accept those aspects of yourself like you would accept them in a close friend that you valued. This is how you become grounded in who you are as an individual. Even though you seek to grow, it doesn't mean that who you are now isn't acceptable. The better that you become at validating yourself and recognizing that your own view of yourself matters more than others' view of you, the more satisfied you will feel with your own abilities and the less validation that you will need. Number 3. Even though learning body language is helpful, don't overthink it. This one is rarely talked about, but it should be discussed more because it's a journey that's been traveled many times before. When trying to better understand the world, yourself, and others, you will likely encounter tons of information about body language. There is value in understanding it. Having an intuitive understanding of the underlying context of your interactions is powerful because it helps you express yourself and understand others better. However, you can't and shouldn't overthink it. I will eventually make a video about assumptions, but for now, it's good to be aware that overassuming can lead to self-destruction if you don't account for it. In the same way, overly self-monitoring your own body language or trying to make jumps based off of assumptions about other people's body language will lead you to become self-conscious and act in ways that are even worse than before you had an understanding of it. We will explore healthy body language in the future, but just be aware that there is a point of diminishing returns. There is a period in our lives where we should all learn about body language and test things out, but don't let it become an anchor that pulls you down. You want to apply concepts efficiently, because if it becomes too esoteric, then you will needlessly create negative outcomes for yourself. If it takes up too many mental resources, then you're doing something wrong. Of course, these are simple rules and there are always going to be exceptions where other conflicting rules apply. Additionally, 
Each individual point could have its own video with its own more precise actionable steps. Therefore, there's much more nuance to this concept which will be explored more in the future. Ultimately, as you become better in your understanding of how your need for validation can be self-sabotaging, you will become much better equipped in society. So here are the takeaways. State your opinion without actively seeking approval. Don't rely on others for your validation. Validate yourself. Even though learning body language is helpful, don't overthink it. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like because I do update the total like count of all the videos on the channel at the end. At some point, I'll be raising the stakes where reaching certain milestones will lead to different community events and competitions. You can also find a feedback form in the pinned comments which you can fill out if you wish. It allows me to get a better understanding of your needs. If you'd like to join our hidden approval-only community on Reddit, then you can also find the link there. I'll see you soon.